Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Women in Nigeria, as Watini says, less than 30% of women in the country are in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics space. The founder and managing director, Bongegile Matenjo, says although few, few women have been able to start businesses in this sector, they are pushing to overcome the stereotype associated with becoming a female engineer. She joins me now to talk about ways in which women in Nigeria, uh, as Watini is trying to uplift women engineers to ensure that they become major contributors to the economy. Very good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you for joining us, Wonge um, You started the, this organization um, mainly because you saw a gap in the industry. that actually in the industry, women and young girls. Good afternoon. And thank you for having me. Um, to your question, based on the statistics that you have in the country, although... Um, we still have a challenge in terms of data gathering, but mm -hmm. uh, data shows that there's about 30% of women in science, technology, engineering in Eswatini. Okay. So 70 out of 10 women, out of 10 people in the STEM industry, there's only three female who are mm -hmm. professionals in the industry, okay. which is quite low. <laughs> it's, it's very low. So yeah. I assume you did your research, you know, mm -hmm. uh, upon establishing your organization, Le Bouge Veleti, Dinsabate STEM, Science, Technology, and Mathematics. So there's quite a lot that contributes to the low numbers. Um, firstly, um, if you look in, in the home setup, you find you will see as the Sakula and Homadana, they're more channeled towards the softer tasks in the, in the house. Mm. And so they're not necessarily uh, groomed to actually take on difficult challenges like boys do. Yeah. And also the fact that even as they grow up, they get to high school and university, they only see a majority of the men in the STEM careers. They see STEM careers as very um, male um, required in terms of you need to have strength or certain um, physique to be to survive in the STEM industry. Yeah. So there's a lack of role models who are females in the STEM industry uh -huh. for these girls to look up to. And also at the same time, there's been a belief that STEM uh, subjects back at primary, high school, they're very hard. So females then tend to shy away from sub subjects, although mm -hmm. it has been proven now and again, even from the Form 3, Form 5 results, girls are smarter. But because of those stereotypes, they then shy away from these uh, STEM careers. And then also lastly, um, the fact that also, because we have a majority of men in the industry, um, the opportunities for female to actually thrive in the industry. Currently now they face quite a lot of challenges. Um, if you look at all the leaders in the that we have in the country, most of them are males. So mm -hmm. even if you get into the industry, for, for you as a woman to actually thrive and become an MD or CEO, it does take you quite a lot of work. You, probably you have to work twice as hard as your male counterpart to actually yeah. get there. So there's quite a lot of um, activities that we still need to actually overcome, gender stereotypes that we need to overcome. And I believe Esardini is working towards that direction. Mm. The government has done quite a lot in terms of empowering the girl child and to take on STEM careers. We've seen um, government hosting STEM career fairs. There's been also STEM exposed by the Royal Science Technology Park. Even us as women in engineering, Eswadini, we have we've done a lot in terms of going out to the high schools, primary schools, to actually educate the girls that they can actually take on STEM careers if we were able. And the good thing about what we do is that we show them through our own personal stories. So mm -hmm. the people who go that we have in our group are only females in STEM. So we believe that as the girls look up to us and see us thriving in the industry, they too can also be inspired and empowered. Yeah. You know, yeah. as I listen to your talk, I still get the impression that there's still this perception that this industry is for is, is, is for males. Uh, but has it changed over the years, you know, the mindset, Google TV, you know, girls can also partake in STEM careers? There's been a change, but mm. not as significant as it should. So currently there is that... There, there are those gender, uh, stereotypes mm -hmm. where the girls still believe that um, this STEM industry is mostly for men. 
and hence why we are trying to change that perception by working with women already in the industry to go to these girls to show them that hey yes perhaps maybe around your community you only see males in the STEM can industry but we they are females and as we bring them together connecting them through mentorship and coaching it then helps them to build their own self belief to say that hey if she can do it then definitely so, i can so can i yeah. so what are these career paths that you know students can 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 follow if they partake in stem subjects he but that by engineering because engineers uh, but, but what are the career paths I believe that STEM is actually the world around us. Mm -hmm. There is no career that does not, I mean, there's no industry that doesn't have a, career, a STEM professional. Mm -hmm. If you look at the hospitals, we have okay. nurses, doctors, uh, we have lab laboratory technicians, those are STEM professionals. If you go to the construction industry, you have civil engineers, you have uh, quantity surveyors, those are STEM careers. You go to the entertainment industry, for instance, it's TV. You yeah. have technicians, sound engineers, those are STEM careers. So there's quite a lot uh, of uh, careers in STEM that girls can actually um, take on. And that is why we believe that we cannot have a thriving STEM industry with the majority or half of the population not represented. Yeah. So we need more women and girls to participate in the STEM industry to develop good business opportunities and yeah. initiatives uh, coming up with innovative ideas that could help a certain get to the first world data that it wants to. Yeah. Speaking of businesses, you did mention uh, there's about 30% of young women and girls that are in the STEM careers. Uh, how many do actually do, do they have their businesses and are sustainable? What we mm -hmm. have seen is because they are a minority, mm they tend to work very hard and excel in what they do mm -hmm. because they want to um, have a voice and eventually get more people to um, more customers i mean and so we've seen quite a lot of women even in our in our organization that have started up um, care, uh, businesses that are mm -hmm. stem related and like i said earlier STEM is the world around us, so there's no business that does not have a STEM um, mm -hmm. professional. Uh, so you've seen in the construction industry, there's some women already that are owning construction companies mm -hmm. uh, that are already thriving, although because of um, their male dominance, uh, they're still growing, um, which is also an opportunity even for government to also support them as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have women who are quantity surveyors con doing consulting company. I mean, having consulting companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so their companies are also thriving as well. We also have women who are also in the analyt chemical analytical space who are also ha who also have their own firms as well, which are thriving. So we have seen um, a change or contribution from women even in the mm -hmm. um, economy space. Okay, so with the expos uh, and the career expos that you normally host as a women in engineering, um, the what, what is the level of interest, you know, from students? Do they ask a lot of questions? Are they inquisitive, you know, about this industry? Yes, definitely there is. It's uh, from the girls that we uh, that we work with because what we have targeted are mostly the the, the schools that are outside you know the city centers and your towns where they lack information about the different careers that they can pursue so coming in there um, they then value the information that we share with them and also okay. the fact look, look, that currently we have a crisis in the unemployment rate mm -hmm. so now there's a lot of interest in terms of people trying to develop businesses initiatives just so that they can uh, have a stable source of income. So there is also that interest as well to say, if I'm a STEM professional, what sort of business initiatives can I actually start? Mm -hmm. And then that's where we then bring along the females who are already running businesses to share their story mm -hmm. and help and support them up until they, the girls eventually also have their own uh, businesses. And recently, part of, as part of our program, we've even developed a competition where we've asked the girls to identify a problem that they encounter in their community 
okay. and try and develop a solution to it that they can actually turn into a business idea. Mm. And um, we have seen a few, uh, some of, a few of those girls coming up with great initiatives that um, we've uh, developed. Yeah. yeah. So, when you look back on it, you know, some some learners about color, you know, these these subjects are quite difficult, really math, science, uh, technology. But you know, how 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 can you help them overcome that mentality? What we have seen, and also even basing it on, even on my own personal experiences while I was still in high school, mm. um, I will not lie to say that STEM subjects are not easy. I mean, they're not difficult. Mm. They're not easy. <laughs> and so therefore, what we have done is we basically just use our own personal experiences to help them. Okay. Firstly, uh, the mentorship. Um, the ones that, for instance, let's say if you identify a girl who wants to pursue a career in medicine and because part of the subjects that they have to pass is chemistry and physics, we then connect them with a the woman who's already in that space who okay. can help them in terms of tutoring, perhaps maybe not necessarily them, but can connect them with the tutor to just support them in terms of their uh, studies. Because we also work with girls at university that are also studying towards STEM professions, mm -hmm. they've also been big sisters to the girls in primary and mm -hmm. high school and to help them in terms of their studies and also in terms of career guidance. So those initiatives have also helped to um, strengthen their, their maths or physics skills mm -hmm. so that they can uh, eventually do well in those subjects. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Tibongegele. Let's hope you uh, my students are really your advice. Mm -hmm. These subjects, I'm a little bit of just need to be more determined, right? Mm -hmm. That was Bongegele, my tenure, because I'm getting opportunities that are there in the STEM career. So, when we come back, we connect with Mr. Spear.